It's our first full day in Bethesda, and this morning I'm off to NIH for some tests. Had my blood draw. Yay, Jessica, first try. Bonus points to you. And then I had an EKG. They gave me the printout, and I was like, what am I supposed to do with that? And he's like, for your own records. <laughs> The clinic can get it electronically. So I just have it because they don't know what to do with it because the machine still prints one out. You frame it when you get home. Suitable for framing. And look, apparently I have a heartbeat. Not dead. Resting heart rate of 82. Nervous much? I've heard two announcements where they asked patients to return to their unit, which means they've had at least two patients while I was here escape their unit <laughs> and they have to call them back. Like, please. Come back, you're a patient here. Now, as a hospital patient, I have attempted many times to escape my unit, and I've gotten caught every time, so I'm a little bit jealous that they're getting out and not getting caught. And just like that, I got my chest x-ray. It took more time for me to take my clothes off than it took to get the x-ray. She says, do you have a shunt? <laughs> yeah. And so the shuttle doesn't run for an hour, so I think we're just gonna walk to the subway station and get back to our hotel. It's a nice day. We made it back from NIH for the subway station, going to our hotel. And I just had the most interesting thought. I wonder what's going on in our hotel right now. I was like, oh, I'll go back and take a nap. Maybe not. There was some sort of photo shoot in the room next to us. It may still be going. So we stayed at the hotel last night and there were men in the room next door pounding and watching a game until about midnight. But today it's women in the room and they're doing a photo shoot loudly. I hope it's for a wedding. My imaginations run wild. LuLaRoe? Feet for OnlyFans? I don't know. We got back and it's quiet. I don't know what they're doing over there. This is my second full day at NIH. I have my MRI this morning. We had a strange turn of events. My lab work came out that I have anemia. I don't know how that affects my surgery. So after MRI, we're gonna go to clinic. And it's off to the MRI machine I go. Actually, I still have to get the IV put in, but you know, I'm in the outfit. And the urology clinic says that I am not anemic. Yay! So finished the MRI. She had to try twice to get the IV in, and so the first time really hurt, and my arm still hurts. In fact, I'll use the other arm. I stopped by the clinic, and they said that I am not anemic, which is good, because if I was anemic, they might have to postpone my surgery, so. Or give me a blood transfusion, all sorts of drama. So they're also gonna have a nurse call me, let me know. And we ended up applying, well, I applied to get a badge so I can get on and off campus without having to stop at security every time. And then Jerry will be able to apply for one. You can hear him, he's crinkling something. Now, we're gonna go eat some lunch. This is our third day dealing with NIH. <laughs> Today, had nothing scheduled, but last night I got a call from the physician's assistant from the urology office that my MRI yesterday of my brain and spine, they saw something that they're concerned about in neurological surgery, which is another one of my protocols here, another study I'm in. And so they want me to get a CT today of my brain and then 
go up to their clinic, which is today, and finagle my way into an appointment so that they can see and my CT and my MRI and see if I am fit for surgery. Today's a weird day. It is hot outside, but it's supposed to rain. Very confused of how to dress for that, for hot rain. I guess people don't dress for that. They just bring an umbrella. We don't use umbrellas in the Northwest because we don't have hot rain. We have cold rain. We just wear a coat with a hood. So Jerry's bringing our rain coats. So we're covered if it starts to pour on us, which I think it's going to. Anyway, so today we're going to see what happens. I am not allowed to eat for four hours. I'm starving, but I am allowed to drink. So I'm going to drink as much water as I can so that they can get a good IV start because they're going to do contrast on the CT. So there's always that. And the person that has been really good at making sure that I get to all these things and communicating with me and everything is leaving on vacation tomorrow and be gone all week. It's hard to be chipper. Where our sleep schedule's like all messed up from flying and then getting to the hotel and taking naps and getting up really, really early, like having to get up at five, which is two o'clock, 2 a.m. our time. Having not eaten and having a weird sleep schedule, feeling a little bit drained. It's probably not how you're supposed to go into surgery. If I'm having surgery, this is the roller coaster that a trip to NIH is. <laughs> Oh yeah, she asked me yesterday if my doctor had said that I was cleared for surgery, which I did on August 30th. I saw my primary care. She cleared me for surgery. She put it in her summary. There's a man left. And I forgot to send it. So I sent it last night so they have a copy. All right, shuttle to NIH. We're hit the 1106 shuttle for a 1240 CAT scan. Got my line started in my arm the first try because she followed my directions. Had a super, super contrasty CT. They just pumped a ton of contrast into me. I've never felt so much. Everything was burning and hot. And I got out, I ate a salad just as quick as I could. Jerry had some lunch and now we are going to OP5, which is the outpatient clinic for neuro, to find out what is going on with my brain that they're so concerned about. I'm worried. This could put a whole hitch in trying to get this kidney surgery. Well, the first person came in, we'll just call him Jay, and he's a resident here, and he did like the stick out your tongue and push forward on my fingers, push back, and um, thought everything looked okay, and they saw aneurysm on the CTA. Not concerned about it because you can see there is a video about the aneurysm that I did before. I'll link in the description if I remember. I know about the aneurysm, so it's no shocking news. So we'll see if the surgeon wants to talk to me this time. He's really nice. I'm reading the slides on the computer, I'm learning all about hand hygiene. The sad commentary is that. They have to put slides on the computer to teach people about hand hygiene at the National Institutes of Health as if they would not learn about it in, let's say, medical school. I'm going to assume they've all been well trained about hand hygiene, just reinforcing. Back in the day, having kidney surgery, when I think MRSA had just come out, and we're just learning how important hand hygiene can be, and I had hand sanitizer on my table like this, in the hospital. Side tray. My side tray, I had hand sanitizer and a bowl of candy. If you sanitized your hands, you could have a piece of candy. And there were doctors who would walk in and I go, did you sanitize your hand? And they go, oh, and they had to do them. This was not the turn of the century. This was like 2006 and they weren't hand washing. And that was at the university hospital. So I guess bad habits die hard. So speaking of Mm -hmm. the VHL related issues. Yeah. You have a number of hemangioblastomas yes. and none of those appear to be causing problems. Yeah. They're all growing a little bit. You know, the one of concern is the one over the brainstem. Yeah. But even that is sort of, it's not, it's never optimal to have a tumor. But if there were to be a brainstem tumor, 
that's sort of a little bit safer than the, the usual range, this would be it, you know. It's a little bit in a safe location, so we're, we're okay with that. Okay. You have an aneurysm right. on the right side. You know, a few years ago, it was small. Right. Or smaller. Yeah. Now it's slightly larger. Okay. Now there's this cutoff number. It's 7.5 millimeters, and okay. yours is above that now. Okay. okay. But in general, it is thought that if the aneurysm in the location that you have is over seven and a half millimeters, it should be treated. So I'm scheduled for surgery here next week. To Correct. Have the partial nephrectomy. Am Correct. I safe to do that? Yes. So you cleared. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. And then um, when I get home, then I'll get the referral. Look, I mean, the recommendation is get treatment. You know, it's not get treatment tomorrow. Okay. Know? Because the, the chances of rupture are uh, finite, they're real, but they're still very low. So you heard what he said. I'm back on track for kidney surgery, but I will need to deal with the aneurysm when I get back. But hopefully, since it's not his specialty, the doctor at home will have a different recommendation because the doctor that I saw Cameron before certainly did. <sighs> My recurrent mastitis is acting up, but fortunately I went through my antibiotics and I have enough to just do a round of antibiotics on my own. So I'm going to give it a little more time just in case I've hurt myself by accident for it to stop hurting. And then it said that it was not raining when I got up. So either the app lied to me or something's changed. I did not wear my rain galoshes or my raincoat. So hopefully we'll stay out of it today. MRI number two. out of the MRI. First try, back of my hand this time. change this was the restaurant space that was on top chef obviously it's a different restaurant now we walked around Bethesda Road and shopped the tiny bit I bought thank you notes they're sloths because when I'm recovering from surgery I'm just gonna be laying in bed asking people for help and so when I thank them it's thank you from the sloth I got a sandwich from Tacks? Tape? Tape? I don't know. It's a long time since I took French. Gluten-free sandwich. Probably the only sandwich I'll eat this year. And then Jerry got... Gluten-filled sandwich. What'd you get? Subway. The meatball, meatball sub. sub. Everybody says don't get it. Don't get it. The people who clean the machines don't say do, do not do it. And you did it. 